What's going on guys? We are on to the Skidoo 850 XRS Renegade from uh, 2022, so this year's model. Uh, Jesse and I, you guys know, are huge fans of these 850s. We've been running them for uh, pretty much the past four seasons now. We've had you know, 18, we had 21s, now we have 22s. And uh, we absolutely love these sleds. We've put you know, a lot, a lot of kilometers on them. Uh, I put a lot of kilometers on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Most kilometers I've ever done in a season, 13,000 yeah. K right on this sled here. So it's been, uh, oh man, I, I can't say enough good things about it. From just the handling of the sled, once we've got them dialed in with the Bergstrom triple points and uh, how we've adjusted our suspension and, and uh, tightened up our front track spring mm -hmm. just to take the weight off the skis a little bit and make the steering a little bit lighter. We've got the sleds to handle unbelievably. Yep. And over the bumps, these things are just absolute weapons. Bigger bumps, the faster you go, and it just walks right over it. For me, a couple things that stand out. The 7.8 inch gauge, when it came out last year, it was definitely a step up for Skidoo from what they had before. But there are a lot of drawbacks with it. One being BRP Go and that whole software isn't reliable. And that's what we, me and Mike have found the past couple of years or the past two seasons using it. I'll download my whole trip beforehand. I'll download the maps, I'll plug it in. And then halfway through my ride, I'll get application unavailable on the screen or the app will freeze or a number of things. And to me, when I'm on a trail, the one thing I don't want to fail is my GPS. And you guys have heard me rant about this before, but that's kind of why I have my Garmin. The other thing, as I mentioned in the Polaris video on the VR1, um, the positioning of this gauge, like right now, I can't even see the gauge. I got to move my handlebars to see the gauge, Yep. right? Because the Polaris gauge is up here. So the positioning could definitely be improved. I know Skidoo has come out with a new gauge for next year, but some of the main issues that we had with this gauge are still present. The, or the positioning of the gauge, you saw it in person, it's the same, correct? Mm -hmm. So that's the same it's, flaw. It's, it's still it's the same. So they've made it, they've made it a little bit higher, right? Because it's a, it's kind of, it's a little bit taller, but it's still, but it's still in the same yeah. position. Yeah. That's the thing. And the other thing is it still requires you to connect the phone and yeah. it still requires you to use the satellite or the GPS through cellular off of your phone instead of having it built into the gauge, which is what Polaris is doing. And I think is definitely better. Uh, but I what, think also for us too, because we add the additional riser extension, it makes it even worse. Yep. Because you're basically adding another. But regardless, inches, even right? without the riser extension, when you're sitting on the sled and you're looking forward at the trail, you got to look down to see the gauge, mm -hmm. regardless of how high the bars are, right? So that's definitely a drawback. I think also with this gauge, only being able to control it from the joystick. Listen, the joystick works, it does everything. I don't have an issue with it, but you can't really use it while you're riding the sled because you want to go hit the brake, you're screwed. And um, yeah, just it, now that it's touchscreen for next year, it's a big improvement. And that you can control it from uh, the handlebar cluster is great, like the Polaris. So I think they've, they're going in the right direction, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, what else can we talk about? <laughs> so as I mentioned in the Polaris video, the uh, handlebar warmers on Skidoo's, they need to be improved. They haven't changed. It's the same technology for probably going on 20 years now. Mm -hmm. Setting one is boiling hot, setting 12 is boiling hot. So definitely could be improved on, on that side. Um, in terms of like the rider positioning, me and Mike have gotten so used to how the Gen 4 feels like between the, between the legs and how we sit on it. When I'm sitting on the VR1, I feel a little bit more uncomfortable, not necessarily because it's a worse riding position, just because I'm not used, not to, used it. to it. Like That's I put so many kilometers on these Gen 4s <laughs> My 18 XRS, when I sold it, had just under 14,000 K. This one has 13,000 K. My one last year had 5,000 K. So I, we've just gotten used to these sleds. And I find that when I'm sitting on this sled, I feel like I'm a little bit lower. The Polaris makes me feel a little bit higher. Also the positioning of, when I got the Gen 4 for the first time, I didn't think I would like this whole open foot concept. Mm -hmm. But now I do. When I get in the Polaris, I feel restricted. I like to be able to slide my feet out. And that's something I didn't think I would like, but after running it for a few years, I definitely like it. <laughs> the seat, nice and soft. And that's something we've come to love. It's an XRS, so it is a rough trail sled, but the seat, the seat is still soft and it's comfortable for long day rides. And 
<laughs> I did 830 kilometers in one day in Cochrane uh, for an endurance ride and we did 460 kilometer days on our trips and we weren't uncomfortable on these sleds at all. Yeah, there's, there's, you know, there really isn't anything for me that I don't like about the sled. I just can't get over the fact that, you know, the positioning of the gauge for me is probably the biggest thing with the machine. Other than that, there isn't anything I don't like about the sled. I absolutely love it. I think it's hands down for me, it's been the best sled I've ridden to date. Um, I think the E-Tech also is a bit of a step above the Polaris just in terms of, you know, how it's engineered. It's virtually smokeless. Yeah. It's a smooth running engine. Being able to summarize it just with the push of a button. Yeah, the, the summarization features for sure. Um, the one thing is they love oil, you know. They love oil. And it's all dependent <laughs> on how you ride. The harder you are on the throttle, the more oil you're, you're going to burn. They love oil. But you know what? That's okay because the, the older 800 p -techs were they were known for, for, you know, for blowing up and they didn't last too long. So... With these, they run a little bit rich, but at least it means they the sleds, yeah. And you're you're not hearing too much about, you know, 850 is blowing up early on. At least we haven't, and we yeah. haven't had any any issues with them whatsoever. My 18 now has over 17,000 k with the guy that bought it, and the sled's still going. Still going. Hasn't even done a top end rebound. So. <laughs> we have our buddy Jeff <laughs> that we rode with that you guys have seen in the videos this year. On the last weekend of the year for him, his 850 finally went, and it had 80 8,800 miles on it. Uh, before it basically mm -hmm. blew apart and that's you know that's pretty good for and, for and it got warranted going. and replaced right yep. so it happens and at least it happened at the end of the season form yeah the other thing i didn't mention in the polaris video which i'll mention now polaris is definitely a step above when it comes to the braking system oh for sure that brake on that machine the feel of it how it reacts yeah. and i've heard the xcr is, is even one step above because it's a beefier braking system the brake on the screw is fine there's nothing wrong with it I just think the brake on the Polaris is better. And yeah, that's something I've noticed, uh, completely unbiased, just from riding the two sleds. Uh, this sled also, even when you put it, and we've spoken about this a lot, when you change the, 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 the transfer arm in the suspension for the more transfer, how much of a difference does it make, Mike? It doesn't make that much of a difference. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, like, I think that's one of the things that I've learned to love now with the Polarises, just with riding Jesse's dad's 19 and, and even the, the VR1 here is just the transfer for some reason on the Polaris's. And again, I don't know what it is that's that different, but they transfer so well and they put power to the track so well that they hook and they go. And I find the skidoos don't do it as well, even if you yeah. adjust the arm, which I've done on all my last three sleds actually. Yeah. So this 850, the last 850 I had, and even the mock I did it. And I haven't really noticed too much of a difference um, adjusting it, hoping to get more, you know, more power to the track. I find these spin a little bit more than, you know, than when you get on the Polaris. Yeah, the Polaris just seem to hook up a little bit better. Yeah. The other thing I, I have to say is the front suspension on these, or the front end handling rather on these sleds, takes a little bit of time to get tweaked. When you get in the sled, when you get on the sled right out of the box, pick up the sled from the dealer brand new and you go to ride it, it's not going to handle excellently on the front end. And that's something that you have to take time to tweak. And we... I, I would say for the aggressive riders, you're going to want to make changes. Yeah, I just find right. the front end, was, out of the box, the front end feels heavy. And that to me was something that I don't like. I don't like heavy steering. I don't want it super light. You want to have that balance where it's heavy enough that you're still biting, but not too heavy that you feel like you need to take some steroids to be able to ride all day. <laughs> but um, Wait till you get on the mock. <laughs> <laughs> We're on to that video next. But uh, yeah, in terms of the sled, some positives. Tether, guys, the tether's the way to go. skidoo has been doing this for years. <laughs> Unbelievable. The E-Link system, just being able to combine your electric visor cord with your key and having yeah. it all on your person, it just makes it simpler. On the Polaris, when I get off, I got three things. I gotta pull out my tether, I gotta pull out my cord, and then I gotta take out the key. It's like I, <laughs> I'm getting in an aircraft when I'm just getting on a snowmobile. But um, other things about this sled that we just absolutely love, Link link everywhere whether it's our glove box extension that we have uh the windshield's super easy to put on on the polaris it's it's way more of a pain they're like these like plastic pieces that you have to pop out to get any part of that machine apart or take the windshield off yeah on these machines it's literally just grommets this whole thing will pop off super easy other things about it just having all the link brackets on the tunnel yes you have this on your you can get it on a polaris but having the the 
link bracket here and being able to put a combo bag or a trail seat bag on here. And just having use of different link bags for us, especially with all the saddle bag riding we do it, we're doing, is a no-brainer. And that's for me why, if you guys noticed on our Quebec trip, on my New Brunswick trip, on any of my high mileage multi-day trips, this is the sled I ride and not the VR1. And it's not because I don't like the VR1, it's because I don't have the storage space I need. I gotta carry all this camera equipment and all the video equipment we need for YouTube. <laughs> I gotta carry lots of oil because this thing likes to drink. <laughs> Mike knows because he's carried some of my oil on some of the trips. But that's kind of why I like this sled. And also for me, as I mentioned, I have my Garmin Zumo set up on this and the trails are accurate. And for me, when we're on a trip, I wanna know exactly where I am. I wanna know exactly where I'm going. That should be the least of my concerns. So that's kind of why I've stuck to this sled. But again, I'm, I'm just more used to the ride of this sled and I kind of, I, I love it. Prefer I, it. Yeah. I, hands down, I prefer it. I mean, I got to put some miles on the VR1 and I definitely like it, but I keep coming back to, to the It's a fun it's sled. A it is sled. a fun sled. Yep. I just feel like I could run more kilometers more comfortably on this sled than I can on the VR1. Yeah. I also, I'll, I'll say too, with the last couple that we've had, this one's been my favorite. So hats off to Skidoo this year with the color combo. Yeah. As soon as I saw it, I was like, yep. Yeah, Black it. tunnel, Black no tunnel. stains. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have to deal with the yellow and scrubbing it down every weekend. Yep. And I also am a huge fan of this. I think the look of the seat is yeah. amazing. The gray seat with the colored logo on the yeah. back. It's nice. The fit and finish on Skidoo's, it's just what they're known for. Everything yeah. is just so nicely put together. And Polaris Perfect. is catching up and their matrix is a huge step forward and showing that they can do it too. But fit and finish on Skidoo's have always been known to be amazing and, and they don't disappoint. Yep. Definitely, you know, from all the sleds that we've had this year for sure, I think still it's at the top of the list for us. We absolutely love the Renegade 850 XRSs. Um, certainly, I think back to Jesse's point on the smart shocks, we probably should have ordered one of them with smart shocks or at least got our hands on an 850 this year with smart shocks to try it. But I'm still not convinced. I'm, I think the smart shocks are good and I liked it on the mock, but I also think it's kind of like a, an interesting situation because if you find the guy that really knows exactly how they like their sled set up, mm -hmm. they're going to appreciate regular shocks more over smart shocks. Yeah. Because you have possible. more adjustability, right? Like on smart shocks, yes, it's making on the fly adjustments, doing it for you. which is something that you can't do with, a, with like manual shocks. But the guys that want that 22 clicks of adjustment on their sled, when you have smart shocks, you're dumbing it down to three. And I think what I've noticed is I think uh, Sport Plus is a little bit too stiff, I think it can kind of be shifted down a little bit um, yep. that, from our experience on the mock, but we'll get into that a little bit more in our mock video. But yeah, the KYB shocks that they have uh, on the XRS package, the non-smart shocks are still great. Uh, they changed that in 2018 when it came into the Gen 4, they went from Pro 40s up front to Pro 36s and it just made the sled much smoother to ride and much more comfortable. The XRS used to have a bad rap for being mm -hmm. that like really, really rough, stiff sled. And when they changed that, it just made the sled way more compliant and it got, the sled grew in popularity. And now I'm all, I would be convinced to say that the Renegade, the Renegade XRS is probably one of the more popular skinny trail sleds nowadays. Oh, for sure, yeah. definitely. A lot of guys are getting XRSs. There's still lots of guys that get X packages and I have nothing against the X package. I think it's a great sled. But for us and the type of riding we do, if I get into any bumps, I know that this thing won't disappoint me. Yeah. And after 13,000 kilometers of riding this thing, every kilometer I had a smile on my face, it never disappointed me. And uh, yeah, it's just been, it's been an awesome season with this sled. So I am not getting a new sled next year. Mike is getting a Gen 5. I will be continuing to ride this sled. Hopefully I'll blow it up under warranty so I can get a new engine. <laughs> and if I can't, then Mike will ride it and blow it up for me. But um, yeah, no, it's, it's been awesome. and. Um, yeah, that's kind of our, our thoughts on it. We love the sled. We've always loved these sleds. There are certain flaws, there are certain things they can, they can upgrade and make better. But to, uh, to me, it's still my favorite sled to date. Yep, Yeah. I agree. So thank you guys uh, for watching this video and uh, we got one more sled review or full season review coming on the Mach Z, so stay tuned for that. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. If you liked that video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the Sled Addicts YouTube channel where we release content on everything snowmobiles. Also, hit that bell icon so you can be updated every time we release new videos.